Hello everyone, welcome back. So last time we had seen deserialization. We had extracted the object from the file and then printed it. So if you have not watched the earlier videos, I'll mention the link in the description. Please go and watch it. So today we'll be exploring few more important concepts. So let's start. So last time we had printed information one by one. So first we had printed the ID and the name. So why not print the entire object at once instead of printing the fields one by one. So let's just print the object. So my object Okay, so now I'll just comment this code. Let us just run our application. So here you can see, actually it's printing the memory address of the object. So the information that we would like to see like the variables and the values which is stored, all those things are not uh, displayed here. So in order to display those information, what we need to do is we need to go to our class and then here we need to override the two string method. So let's do it. So now what this two string method does is it will represent our object as a string and in this format. So this is the default format. So as per our requir requirement, we can customize it. So now if we try to print the object, then at that time uh, we'll be able to see our object in this particular format. So now let us go back to our deserialization class and then here let us try to print it okay so we have got an exception here invalid class exception so okay Due to serial version UID mismatch, uh, we got this exception. So once this exception is resolved, then we will be able to see our object getting displayed in this particular format. So for now, let us focus on serial version UID. So let us see what it is and why we are getting this exception. So serial version UID basically maintains the version of a serializable class. So each serializable class that is a class which implements a serializable interface. So each of this class will have a serial version UID. Whether we mention it or not, this field will be present in the class. So if we mention it explicitly, then we can initialize it with a value. But if we do not mention it, then JVM at the runtime will generate a value for this ID based on the information present in the class. So the advantage of mentioning the serial version UID by ourselves is that the value of this ID will be same throughout the serialization process, like at the time of serialization as well as deserialization. But suppose if we do not mention it and we let JVM generate this ID, so what issue might be there is that um, suppose we have initialized an object and then before deserializing it, what we do is we actually come to this class and then we made some changes to this class. So now what happens is since we have not mentioned the uh, version ID explicitly 
so the jvm at the runtime will generate the version id so based on the information present in the class so uh, now since we have made changes to this class so the serial version id which will be generated by jvm would be different so at the time of serialization it was different now before deserializing i have come and made some changes to this class so now the new serial version id would be different so now if i try and uh, deserialize the object so now i will get an exception because of the mismatch of serial version uids so that is exactly what has happened in our case so you can see here serial serial version uid we have two different serial version uids so the first one is so in our case what we had done is after serialization we have made changes to this class so this particular thing we have done after serialization and before deserialization so because of this the serial version uid of this class has changed so that is why here when we are trying to deserialize it so the serial version of the object class which is this one does not match to the serialization serial version uid of uh, our class so this is the new serial version uid of our class after implementing this change so that is the reason we are getting this invalid class exception so what we can do is so in order to avoid this kind of scenarios so we should mention the uh, this thing serial version uid by ourselves so let us do it okay so we have generated it here so but the thing is since we have already serialized our object so even if we generate some random value so this will not match uh, so still will get invalid class exception because it will not match to the id which was to the id of our serialized object so what we can do is since here you can see we have the id of our serialized object you can see from stream from stream the version id we are getting is this one so we can replace this id with the id uh, present in our serialized object so let us do this yeah. so now what happens so what we have done is from our uh, stream uh, from our the object which we are extracting from the file the serial version id for that object is this one and then the new serial version id of our class was this one but what we have done is we have explicitly mention it here and then the value we have put the same as the serialized object so now there should not be any mismatch of this version id so now what we can do is we can actually go and test it so let us just run it and see so yeah here you can see we are able to extract the object since the serial version uid will match the version id of the object that we are getting from the file so and the format you can see since we had overridden the two string method so you are able to see the information in this particular format so next let us see transient keyword so here you can see the object is getting displayed with both the fields present so suppose we do not want one of our fields to take part in the serialization process so in this scenario we can make use of the keyword transient so what this transient does is so the field which we mark it as transient 
those fields will not take part in the serialization process so for example let us do one thing let us uh, serialize this class now so last time we had serialized it to serial1.txt so let us just change it let us create a new one so the details will keep it same only id and name both we have initialized and then we will serialize it to a new file here so let us run this program okay serialization process completed and uh, serial2.txt is generated so now let us deserialize that particular object so here what i'll do is i'll just replace one with two and then save it and then yeah and then uh, we'll just display the object here so let me run this program so now here you can see so we got the id but the name is null even though we had initialized at the time of serialization we had initialized this field still at the time of deserialization we got the value as null this is because of the keyword transient so if we do not want any of our fields to take part in the serialization process then we can use transient keyword just like transient keywords the static variables also do not take part in the serialization process so since static variables belong to the class instead of the instance of a class so it does not take part in the serialization process so we can check it so let us generate getters and setters okay so let us mention the static variable as well okay so now let us serialize this object i'll make it 3 run it serialization process completed uh, serial3.txt is generated so now i'll go to deserialization i'll replace it with 3 i'll run the program yeah so you can see okay sorry actually we had not initialized it gender okay so we have initialized it let us serialize it once again okay serialization process completed uh, let us go and deserialize it yeah so you can see 
uh, id is present uh, name is null because it is transient and then gender is null because it is static so here you can see we have initialized all three but only uh, id is available at the time of deserialization so we'll explore some other concepts next time so thank you